Hello, guys and girls. Um, I decided, it's chapter 9 study guide. I know we were only together for a few lessons. Um, actually, only a couple of them. So what I decided to do is I'm going to upload this video, or whenever you see this video, I'm going to put it up a couple days after I gave you guys a chapter study guide. So when the chapter study guide is supposed to be due, I'm going to give you guys this, so maybe you can use this maybe and kind of check see how you did on your answers. So I'm not going to be great in your study guide, just like I usually do. i like you guys to try to do it on your own. So hopefully you guys are going to try your study guide or already did try it. And I'm going to go through here and go through how the answers should have been done or what your answers you should have gotten. Okay? And then I'm going to give you guys a chapter test probably that next week coming up. Okay? So we'll try to get this all figured out here soon. But um, I'm going to go through these answers here on the chapter study guide and then hopefully that can help you guys out. So here we go. Chapter on study guide. First few are just multiple choice, just knowing what the words are. Okay, first one's a diameter. Remember, diameter is a cord that goes through the center. Okay, so that would be this line right here. It hits that center point. It goes all the way through the circle. It doesn't go outside of the circle, but it goes through the center. Ends, ends, F, G. That's my, that's my um, diameter. So answer would be A on number one. Okay, the reason that is, um, see above there, there's no arrows. We haven't got to talk about this in class because we haven't been together. But if there were arrows on there, that means that it would have kept going. And that's not a diameter because diameter stops and stops. Okay, so this here is a diameter because it stops and stops. Okay, number two, a chord. Same thing. A chord is a segment that is going through the circle. I'm sorry, a segment that is on the outside of the circle. Both endpoints are on the outside of the circle. So that'd be like FG. That's another, that's another chord. Now, FG is not an option. The the core that is there, these two here, I already know those are automatically out because they have arrows on top of them. Okay, those arrows mean they keep going. Cords don't do that. So these two are automatically out. So then I look at these options here. FO is a radius. AB is a cord. Starts on the circle, ends on the circle. You don't go past these points because there's no arrows on here. So AB, the one without the arrows, that is my cord. Now, secant, if you look, it's the exact same answers again. The exact same answers that number two had. A secant is pretty much a chord that keeps going. It's a line that hits the circle twice. A line that goes through the circle. So that would be this chord that I just had, AB. If it kept going, that is a secant. It goes through the circle. So line AB, which is C right there, that's going to be my answer for that circle, for uh, my secant. I got one more here. Let me clear up all this. Actually, no, I don't. For that, that circle is done. So that's just three of the different terms there. There's other terms also. Remember, like a radius um, and tangent. That's your uh, five different types of lines, really, that we're really going to deal with. Okay, so if you know those terms, that's going to be very helpful. Oh, okay, and number four. The diameter of a circular swimming pool is 15 feet. Find the circumference to the nearest hundredth. So that's just being able to use your circumference formula. Now, there's two of them. Circumference is either 2 pi r or pi times d, pi times diameter. So this time they gave me the diameter. So if the diameter is 15, all I'm going to do is just do 15 times pi. They will meet around to the nearest hundredth. Remember, that's two decimal places. So I got 47.123. So I can make it stay 47.12. So that is A. Okay, next circle. Number five in circle A, the measure of angle BAD. BAD, remember the middle letter is the important letter. So they're saying this angle right here is 110. And they want to know how big is arc DE. So what they want you to remember on this question is, if you have an angle from the center of the circle, if this angle is 110, the arc that goes with it is also 110. Okay, the central angle and the arcs are the same size. So then, what they want you to understand is BE, that is a diameter. So if this is a diameter, that's going to cut my full 360 right in half. Half of 360 is 180. So that means this whole side here is 180. If I have 110 right there, I need to do 180 minus 110. That's my answer. So our D would be 70. If they ask more, that would be 70. This would be 70 because those are vertical angles, which means they'd be the same. This would be 110 because they're vertical. They'd be the same also. 
But number five, that's going to be C, 70. Okay, number six. Points X and Y lie on circle P so that PX is 5 meters and measure angle XPY is 90. Find the length of XY to the nearest hundred. Okay, length. Now this is the very first lesson that I didn't do with you guys. It's the one that I had um, on the paper for you on the first handout. The length formula is X over 360 times 2 pi r. So let me draw a little picture here. It says X and Y are on circle P. So circle P is there. Let's say I put X about right there and Y about right here. Now I got a reason for that. What it tells me is that PX, this length here, is 5. And angle XPY, so I'm going to draw another line to Y, this angle right here is 90. So what they really did is they gave me everything that I needed. They gave me the X. The X is the angle that goes with your arc. They want you to figure out the length of arc XY. So we're trying to figure out this arc right here. So the angle that goes with it is at 90. So the length, that L, is going to equal 90 is going to take my X spot over 360 times 2 times pi. Only other thing we got to do is figure out what's this R. And remember what R means. R is the radius. So look at the picture. What is the radius in this picture? Remember the radius is from the center to the side of the circle. Center to the circle. So from P to X, that's a radius. So that 5 they gave me, that's my radius. So there's that time in the calculator. You just put those numbers all in your calculator. And if anybody forgot, there is a nice calculator on Desmos. Dot com. That's really ugly looking. But Desmos.com, there's a really good scientific calculator. And you might need that for this pi button. So you guys might not have pi on your calculator on your phone. You might, but you might not. But if you need a calculator, Desmos.com has got a really good one on your, you can use it on your Chromebook. Okay, just like type in Desmos, I think it's like bottom middle, it'll say scientific calculator. And it should be very similar to a calculator you would have in class. So I'm going to type this in here, 90 divided by 360, oh, divided by 360, times 2 times pi times 5, I got 7.85398, blah, 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 blah. But 7.85, that's going to be B. There we go. Okay, next one, number 7. Chords X, Y, and W, V are equidistant. Equidistant, think about what that, what that might mean. Equal means equal. Distant, distance. They're the same distance from the center of the circle. So we got circle O here. You probably don't need to draw a circle here, but if it's helpful, we got arc, sorry, segment, chord, W, V, and X, Y. They're about the same distance away from the center. What that means, if they're the same distance from the center, then what that really means is that they're the same size. If two chords are the same distance away from the center of the circle, they're the same size. So one of them is 2x plus 3, sorry, 30. The other one is 5x minus 12. So if they're the same distance from that center, they're the same length. If two things are the same length, you always set them equal to each other. Okay, so I would do 5x minus 12 equals 2x plus 30. Let me make sure, this says, make sure that says find x there. Find x. Okay. So I'm going to solve this down. Just maybe subtract the 2x over first. 5 minus 2. 3x minus 12 now equals 30. Read that wrong. So then I have to move this 12 over. I have to add it. So 3x now equals 42. Divide by 3, 42 divided by 3 is 14. So that is C, 14. Okay, next one, number 8 here. What the one you understand on number 8 is this is now an inscribed angle. Now, inscribed means the point, the vertex of the angle 
is on the circle. So this vertex on the angle here, this inscribed angle, that angle is half the size of this arc. Okay, the angle equals half the size of the arc if it's inscribed. It's inscribed. So that's the difference from, I think it's number five up here. If it's from the center, the arc and the angle are the same. If it's inscribed like this, this angle X will be half the size of this arc that goes with it. So they didn't give me either one of those, the X or the arc that goes with it, but they gave me a lot of information. They said, they gave me this line right here. That is a diameter. If that's a diameter, if this is 122, this is going to be what's left of 180 because that's half a circle. So if I do 180 minus 122, I'm going to get 58 right there. So now you can see 58 is an option. That's not right. The angle is half the size of the arc. So now if that's my angle, I'm just going to divide that by 2. That gets me my arc. So 58 divided by 2, that is D29. I think that's number 8. Number 9. Where are we at here? Number 9, last one on the front page. EFGH is a quadrilateral inscribed in the circle P. So let's go look at this picture here real quick. Inscribed means like something, means like, something like this. I got a four-sided shape inside of my circle where every point on that four-sided shape is touching the circle. Okay, so this is angle E, F, G, H. Remember when you name a shape, you always go around it. You don't have to necessarily go like this direction. You can go this direction. But it's never like E, F, G, H. That can't happen. It's got to go around the shape. So angle E is 72. Angle F is 49. They want to know how big is angle H. This is actually pretty easy. This was the inscribed lesson again. I think it was the last part of that lesson. It said if you have opposite angles on these inscribed quadrilaterals, they're not the same. They always add up to 180. They're supplementary. Okay, so the 72 is not useful in this question. It would have helped me find angle G. But they gave you 72 just to try to mess with you, try to make you think a little bit. So if that's 49, it's just 180 minus 49. That'll tell you how big that angle H is going to be. So 180 minus 49 is 131. So that is A. Okay, so on quadrilaterals, the opposite angles add up to 180. Okay, next one, number 10. Okay, this one here. This is our tangent lesson, lesson 9-5. So it should be in pretty good order. It's going to jump around a little bit later maybe, but right now it's in pretty good order so far. They want us to figure out how long RS is. So R to S, this whole bottom is what they want you to find. This is where you just have to remember, if you have a tangent line, say look at uh, point S here, two lines that come out of the same point, if they're both tangent to the circle, remember what tangent means, where it just touches the circle and then keeps going, these links here, the two red lines that I have, are always the same length. So if this is 7, this is 7, then don't think 7, 7 necessarily. You come over here to R and think the same way. If that's 6, that's 6. So I got 6 there. So the whole line is going to be this piece plus this piece. 7 plus 6 is 13. So I have a C. Okay, so that's tangent lines. Number 11, find x. Now, I did a good job of putting a point right there, trying to show you that this crossing point is not the center of the circle. It's not the center of the circle. So this was lesson uh, 9, 6, I believe, secants, tangents, and angle measures. What we have to do on this one, if you don't have an angle from the center and it's not on the circle, then we have to use our little formula that we had, is that if you have a crossing point inside the circle, you're going to do arc plus opposite arc, then divide that by 2. That's going to give you the angles that go with it. So this one's a little bit tricky. X here actually goes with this arc, and this arc over here is opposite of it. So I would want to add those two arcs together and divide by 2 to get, a, to get that X angle. But if I can't, I don't know those numbers, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to figure out maybe this angle here by using 
84 and 120. And then I'll go from there, see if anybody knows what to do from there. But if I'm trying to get this angle, I would use 84 and 120. I would add those together, 84 plus 120, and then divide by 2. So 84 plus 120 equals, and then divided by 2. So it's 204 divided by 2 is 102. Now you can see that's an option, but it's not the right answer. What I just figured out is this angle right here is 102. Now, if I want to get x, you guys might remember, a straight line is 180 degrees. So if I have 102 right there, x and 102 make this full straight line. So if I have 102 there, there's 180 in a full line. So if I subtract that 102 off of 180, 78 is going to be what's left for angle x. So 180 minus that 102 I got gives me 72. Sorry, 78. Okay, number 12. This is the other part of that 9-6 uh, lesson. If this point right here is where they cross, this is where they cross outside the circle. Number 11, the two lines crossed inside the circle. Now if they meet here outside the circle, oh, can I get it? Uh, uh, there it is. Then I want to do big arc minus small arc divided by 2. That equals my angle. And they're going to make you think a little bit on this one. We're trying to figure out angle, I'm sorry, arc AP. So they didn't give me big arc and small arc. If they would have, I would have just done this minus this, divide by 2, that gets me the angle. This one I have to kind of work backwards. The 12 is my angle. The 33 is my small arc. I want to put an X right here for my big arc. So that's what i got to put in my different stuff. 12 is my angle, so I put 12 equals. The big arc, if you guys remember, is the one farthest away from my angle. So x is going to be my big arc minus my small arc. They want to be 33. And then the divide by 2 is still there. Okay, now it's just algebra. you got to think, how do I solve for x? i got to get x by itself. So when you have a fraction, the goal is always to get rid of that fraction first. So if I'm dividing by 2 right now, the way you get rid of that divide by 2 is you multiply it on both sides. Okay, if we're on the left side, 2 times 12 is 24. On the right side, if you're dividing by 2 and multiplying by 2, they're going to cancel out. So then that leaves x minus 33 in that, on the side over there. They just, it stays the same. And in the last step, I'm trying to get x by itself. i got to get this 33 away. So if it's minus 33 right now, I have to do the opposite. Add it on both sides. Kind of run out of space there. But 24 plus 33, that's going to be 57. So x equals 57, that is b. So measure that arc. If you wanted to test it out, you could do this minus this, divide by 2, see if you get 12. But you should, so that'd be b. Okay, number 13, you don't have to do any work. You just got to be able to know the formula. It says we got this formula here, and it wants to know what's the center of the circle. So this is where you just have to remember, this is our, sorry, this is our equation of a circle formula, where the h and the k, that is the center. So just whatever number that is, whatever number that is, that's your center. But it's a little tricky because we got these minuses. So if you guys watch my video on this 9-7 uh, lesson, it's always the opposite sign of what it looks like. So if that says plus 11 right here, that's really a negative 11. Because if I put a negative 11 right there, minus a negative makes it plus. And the same idea here. If that says minus 7, that's really a positive 7 because it starts off minus. So if I put a positive 7 right there in that k spot, it's going to stay minus. So it would be negative 11, positive 7. So that is A. Okay, what do we got next? Number 14. This is where it kind of jumps back. Um, it started off being in order. 1 through 13 should have been in pretty good order. Now it goes back to a tangent question. So tangent is where if you have two tangents coming from this same point, we talked about it earlier, these links have to be the same. 
Anytime two things are the same, you always set them equal to each other. Okay, set those two equal. This one we're just trying to find x. So maybe I subtract 5x first. 7 minus 5 is 2x. Minus 3 equals 1. So I just add that 3 over to get 4. And then, whoops, let's say it's divide by 2 on both sides. X equals 2. So that is A. Whoops. Okay, so remember in a picture like that, those two are the same length. Okay, next to number 15, what we got here? Okay, this one I want you to understand is if you have a tangent line, TS here is tangent because it just touches the circle, and a radius meeting, that always makes a right angle. A tangent and a radius always make a right angle together. So if I have 15 and 10, you got to think, okay, if I have two sides of a right triangle, and I'm trying to find the third, we always use Pythagorean theorem for that. Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if the right angle's here, opposite the right angle is always my C. So I put X in the C spot. And then 10 and 15, they would go in the A and the B spot. So 10's my A, 15's my B. And I just solve those down. 10 squared is 100. 15 squared is 225 equals x squared. Add them together, I get 325 equals x squared. Now, I'm glad that's not an option. I don't want that to trick me, buddy. But the final step here to get rid of a square is take the square root. So I do the square root 325. I got 18.02, so that makes it stay 18.0. That is B. Okay, number 16 goes back to the equation of a circle. So it says this time they gave you the information, and you have to put it into the formula. Okay, so if the center's 2, 3, we'll go write that again. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. So if I have positive, positive right here, the 2's my H, 3's my K, and if the radius is 6, I mean that's my R. I just need to put a 2 right there in the 8 spot, 3 right there, and then my 6 just needs to be squared, radius squared. So I'm also going to write it out even though it's already written out for me. x minus, if I put a positive number in there, it stays minus. Plus in the middle, y minus 3, same idea. And then don't just put 6 squared, or don't just put 6, you actually square this number. 6 squared is 36. So that would be, what do we got here? Looks like D. Yep, looks good. So that is D. Okay, number 17, same idea. Except this time they give you a circle where you have to get the information off of the graph. So the center is that center point right there. Zero, zero is right there. So I'm going left and right, none. So that'd be zero. And then the up, I went up 3, so there's my center point. 0, 3 is my, is my uh, center. Then the radius is how far is it from the center of the circle to the outside of the circle. So I just come from here, and I go straight out to the circle. I go this way, this way, this way, any direction really. Don't go diagonal. But 1, 2, whichever way you count, that's your radius. So in the back of the formula, I need to do radius squared is in the back of the formula. So 2 squared, that's 4, so it's another way to do it. You can kind of eliminate those automatically, because they both say 2 at the end. Then if it's 0 here, you guys might remember me talking about this in the lesson. If I do x minus 0 squared, subtracting 0 does nothing. So a nicer way to do that is just get rid of the parentheses, get rid of the minus 0, and that's just x squared. And then you always have a plus next, and then it would be y minus 3. Because it's a positive 3, you just keep that minus a minus. So that would be, looks like A. And we have left number 18. Kind of crazy looking designs. Now we talked about this number 18 um, back in the lesson. I think it was 9, 9-4 because it's inscribed angles. 
this angle has to be the same as this angle. The reason is because we use different colors. If I extend these lines out, A to C and A to D, that means that's going to this arc here, CD. That angle is inscribed with this arc, CD. The same idea with B. This angle B, if I extend its sides out, goes to D and goes to C. So it goes to the same arc. If two angles go to the same arc, those angles have to be the same size. Okay, so looking at this right here, these two things right here are the same size. I don't need this because it's not, nothing to do with what I need here. These two are the same size, so anytime two things are the same, you want to set them equal to each other. 4x minus 7 equals 2x plus 11. Okay, so I subtract my 2x over. That'll give me 2x minus 7 equals 11. I add the 7 over. It would give me 18. And then divide by 2, we get 9. Now you can see that's not an answer there. If you did, if you did this question and got 9, then good job. But they did start to change it a little bit. It says find the measure of angle A. So angle A is this guy. So I need to put 9 into that answer right there. So 4 times 9 minus 7, 36 minus 7 is 29 degrees. So that would be B. Okay. Next one. Number 19 this is the last one. I believe it is. Yes, there we go. Okay, number 19 says I got 3x plus 6 and x here. What they want you to understand here, this is an inscribed triangle because all three points are on the circle. If you have a diameter and then a triangle made off of that diameter, what always happens, which is kind of crazy, this angle here that doesn't touch the diameter is always a right angle. It's always 90. So then what they want you to understand is these angles here, this is kind of unique. They're not the same. A lot of the stuff's the same in this chapter. Like, th if these are congruent, they're congruent. But what you have to understand here is every triangle has 180 degrees in it. If I know that angle is 90, I'm going to subtract 90 off of that 180. That means there's 90 degrees left for these two angles. Now, I don't really know how big each of them are. They could be 45, 45. They could be 40, 50. They could be anything. So what I do know, though, is that if I add these two together, together those angles have to equal 90. So I want to add the two angles that they gave me there, 3x plus 6 and x, together those are going to equal 90. Okay, so I just combine my like terms, 3x and 1x is 4x plus 6 equals 90, and then solve this down, subtract 6 over. 4x would now equal 84. Divide by 4 for that final step. We get 21. And again, that's an option, but it's not the correct answer. If they want angle A, angle A is this guy right here. So if x equals 21, I'm putting that 21 back into that. So 3 times 21 plus 6. So 3 times 21 plus 6 is 69. So there we go. Okay, so that's the uh, chapter 9 study guide. Hopefully that's helpful. You guys will have a chapter 9 test coming up very soon. Obviously you have this video here. That can be helpful to you. Um, anything that you have as far as notes, worksheets, you can use. Just do your best, okay? This this uh, remote learning is not easy. Um, you just gotta, if you put your mind to it, you can do it. Okay, you just gotta be able to put the effort in. Okay, so if you put the effort in, you're going to get rewarded as long as you're doing the best you can do. Okay? Thanks for watching. I hope it's very helpful to you. And good luck the rest of this semester. Hopefully I get to see you guys again soon.